Warning. What you are about to hear is the true story involving Robert, a cursed doll who currently lies in state at the Fort East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida. Though never proven, it is alleged that to this day, Robert's curse can be passed on to individuals simply by viewing his photo. For that reason, we have not included any actual photos of Robert in this video, and we strongly advise against seeking them out. This video is dedicated to those that lost their lives at the hands of Robert and to those who remain at risk housing him. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to The Phantom. The Curse of the Key West Doll the home of Robert the Doll has been Key West, in the state of Florida, where he has lived for over a hundred years thus far. He is currently in Fort East Martello Museum since 1994. We'll go over the events that led to him finding a home there later on. Even if you haven't heard this story, odds are you've seen at least one or a few films that were inspired by the legend of Robert. Films such as the famous Chucky doll from Child's Play carry a similar theme. While Chucky had a very strikingly creepy look, Robert may not come across as all that scary to some at first, as his eeriness is more subtle. However, even if he looks just like an ordinary doll at first glance, no doubt, you will begin to see him for his actual, unsettling appearance after a while of observing him. He's quite a large doll at around three feet in height, resembling a little boy in average size. Overall though, there is very little except his basic humanoid shape that makes Robert look like a human being. His minimalistic facial features make him look quite disfigured and not in a cute way either. Robert has a barely noticeable nose and two completely round, small black eyes. His ears are quite pronounced and his strange mouth appears to give off a subtle smirk. In his lap, he keeps his toy, a stuffed toy representing a dog. You guessed it, the dog looks somewhat strange as well, with big, glaring eyes and a disproportionately large mouth. Robert himself is dressed in a white sailor suit and wearing a sailor's cap which some speculate was worn by his original famous owner when he was a boy. The man in question was Robert Eugene Otto, who lived in a large Victorian-style house that came to be known as the Artist House since Robert Eugene was a painter. Otto died in 1974, and he is the other half of this story. You can trace the inception of Robert back to the year 1906. That's when the doll was first given to Otto by his grandfather, who originated from the Bahamas. These constitute the two different tales of how Otto first got his doll, and they vary from one source to the next. The first story of origin states that the doll was brought home by Otto's grandfather from a trip to Germany and given to the boy on his birthday. Since the doll is property of a museum for over two decades now, they did their research and supposedly traced Robert as having been manufactured by Steiff a German-based toy company. This fact verifies the first story of Robert's origins. However, there is a different theory as to where Robert came from, which many people believe is the correct origin. Months before Robert Eugene Otto was born, his mother asked his father, Mr. Otto, to go to the Bahamas and bring home four servants to help around the house. She instructed him to ensure that one of them is a woman who would serve as a babysitter for little Otto once he was born. However, Mr. Otto allegedly proved entirely untrustworthy during his trip and he got the soon-to-be nanny pregnant. This incident infuriated Mrs. Otto and she coolly punished the native woman by keeping her locked inside their outhouse for the nine months of her pregnancy, feeding her only scarcely. Due to this malnutrition, her baby was very frail after birth and only lived to be two months of age. Despite this shameful event, Mrs. Otto maintained the servants at her home, giving the foreign woman her predetermined role as a nanny. 
Regardless of the past, the woman took good care of young Robert Eugene and grew incredibly fond of him, treating him as if he was her son. The situation at the household seemed reasonable for a while and things appeared to move along frequently. This situation continued until a particular incident made Mrs. Otto furious, ultimately leading her to banish her poor servants. On one occasion, she went outside during the night and stumbled upon a frightening scene. She witnessed her servants carrying out a ritual that was an established custom in the Santeria religion. This faith incorporates elements of voodoo and animal sacrifice. They were slaughtering a chicken as their offering in the course of this ritual. Mrs. Otto was repulsed and ordered her servants to leave the premises the first thing in the morning. Since she had become very attached to young Otto, the nanny tried to convince her mistress not to separate them, but her efforts were futile. As a farewell gift, the bohemian woman made a doll for the young boy, and he was allowed to keep it as his toy. Whichever of the two stories is true, the gifting of this doll to Robert Eugene marked the beginning of the horrors and hauntings that were to follow for years. From that point on, the young boy became incredibly attached to his doll, and people would routinely see him taking it along when playing outside or walking the streets, all the while talking to the toy doll. The first signs that there might have been something strange about Eugene's toy doll were rather harmless and ascribed to merely the child's shenanigans. Household items and various objects would sometimes be thrown around the place or broken, naturally, the parents would blame their son and reprimand him. However, the boy would always point to the doll and say that it was Robert that did it. Eugene also began to get irritated when his parents referred to him by his full name. He would warn them not to call him Robert Eugene, Otto, and to call him instead Eugene or Jean, his nickname. He was reserving his first name for his supposedly inanimate companion. It wasn't me, Robert did. It became something of a standard thing for Eugene to say when accused of any wrongdoing. The boy would sometimes also have nightmares and get loud and restless in his sleep. His parents would then enter the room with haste to see what happened, only to be greeted by a scene where furniture and other items were shoved about and displaced. It was Robert, Eugene would always explain, pointing to the doll. As some stories suggest, his parents claimed that they would sometimes hear the doll chuckle and even move around the house. Strange incidents continued through the years and Eugene never let go of Robert. Even in early adulthood, at around age 19, people would still see him taking the doll with him down the street, talking to it. Some sources claim this was the time when his parents decided to move to France leaving Robert behind. He would be locked in a wooden chest in the attic. Without Robert, Eugene lived a healthy and reasonably fulfilling life and even got married. Later on, he decided to move back to his house in Florida with his wife, Anne, and make a life in his childhood home. As the story goes, Eugene completely forgot almost everything about Robert the doll, especially the chest where he had left him before, moving. Upon finding him, the past began to flood back into his life and he found himself inseparable from Robert once again. His peculiar behavior, such as taking the doll with him outside and talking to it was hardly becoming of a grown married man. He quickly got a reputation as an eccentric, wacky artist. Eugene's wife was especially troubled by his behavior and his wife forced him to keep Robert strictly in the dome area above the second story of the house. Eugene's strange conduct continued and he allegedly began to have violent outbursts against his wife as well and became an abusive man overall. At one point, he even locked Anne in the old outhouse for three days. When she got out, he blamed Robert, just like he would back when he was a little boy. He subsequently proclaimed Robert the head of the house, built furniture for him, and 
even demanded that he be fed regularly before anybody else. Other people who visited the auto home would sometimes report hearing steps upstairs as if the doll was walking around. Anne frequently heard Eugene talk to his toy doll and when he was alone with it, at times even sounding as if Robert was hurting him, Jean was begging him to stop. Further reports came from children who walked past the house on their way to school or home. They reported seeing the doll appear and then vanish from the windows in the dome top of the artist house, moving around the attic as if it was alive. Many of them grew afraid of the house and would steer well clear of it, while other children perceived it as something of an attraction in the neighborhood. After years of this horror, Eugene passed away in 1974. Some stories suggest that even Eugene's death was bizarre. In particular, he was found dead in the attic of the house, which was by now the quarters designated entirely as Robert's dwelling. Disturbingly, Robert was supposedly on top of Eugene's body with his hands around his neck. Soon after that, Anne decided to sell the house and move back to her homeland, leaving both Roberts behind. One would assume that there must be some sort of exaggeration in these stories, or at least some explanation, if you disregard a lot of the reports and testimonies. Could it be that Eugene suffered from severe mental problems from a very young age? At times, some of the stories point to a level of insanity plaguing this man. Some occurrences resemble symptoms of a multiple personality disorder. However, other than the fact that so many stories cropped up during Eugene's lifetime, there is one more factor to consider when contemplating the legitimacy of the legend. This simple fact is, the story doesn't end with Eugene. That's right, it wasn't over for the people around the cursed doll. It wasn't long after Eugene's death that the new owner of the house, Myrtle Ruer, settled in with her young daughter. Naturally, curious as a child always is, the girl soon came across Robert the doll, who was left collecting dust in his attic domicile. The story has it that the little girl quickly became acquainted with the curse that Robert carried. She reported that he tormented her in different ways and that he was trying to hurt her. Just like before, people who came to the house sometimes said strange noises coming from the attic and Myrtle Reuter took notice as well and believed the doll moved around the house. After quite a while of putting up with the small scale paranormal incidents and unpleasantness, Reuters decided to get rid of the doll and she would donate it to the local museum 1994. As he had already become something of an urban legend by then, he attracted scores of people from all over to come and see him with their own eyes. Believers, skeptics, as well as various enthusiasts visit Robert to this day. Furthermore, he regularly gets letters from those who have and would love to visit him alike. Interestingly enough, some of those letters are apologies from former skeptics who didn't believe but found themselves under an avalanche of misfortune after their visit, especially in the case with those who disrespected Robert. Many people say there is one thing that Robert sees as disrespectful and that's taking pictures of it without his permission. As silly as it sounds, there have been letters sent to the museum in which people apologized for photographing him since their life went entirely downhill after the fact, leaving them feeling cursed. The misfortunes reported included divorce, deaths, loved ones, financial ruin, car accidents, and other mishaps that may befall onto anybody. There was even a warning sign at the museum urging visitors not to photograph Robert. As can be expected, there are also letters sent by people asking for life advice or for Robert to curse their enemies and rivals. While the replies that come from the museum are from employees, the curse received is undoubtedly not. Whether the voodoo spell that has enchanted Robert the doll with evil powers is real or not, one can only speculate. But one final event did occur involving Robert, or supposedly involving Robert. 
On December 25th, Christmas Day, 2019, Shelley McYoon went to the museum to open for the day for the Christmas rush. She was horrified to find three of her employees dead, all strangled, laying on the floor inside the museum, and Robert sitting in the 